Why have I placed a bottle of bourbon, or rather a decanter of bourbon, in front of you without actually saying what I'm here to do? Because this is the best bourbon I've ever had. Hey there, hi there, ho there, and how are you doing? Welcome to Mike's Hard Reviews. My name is Mike, I'm one of the bartenders at the Hilton Gardens Inn Hotel in downtown Kalamazoo. And today we're actually gonna follow what the name of the channel is with an actual review. What was in this bottle and what is now in this decanter is the best bourbon I have ever had. Now, before we dive into this, I do apologize if things are remarkably echoey. I'm currently sitting in a three-person apartment where the two roommates I had have moved out and I'm waiting for everyone else to come in. So this room is very empty. So apologies for the echo. Hopefully it isn't too bad. Despite that, we're gonna get to talk about what is probably the best bourbon I have ever had. So it's no small piece of information that over time, microbreweries and micro distilleries and small family wineries have become a much, much more financially viable thing and therefore have become a massive movement that has grown in popularity over time. In Kalamazoo, there are a couple of these. Smaller brewing and distilling companies like Green Door, who produces bourbons and whiskey, uh, rather bourbon and like other whiskeys, and I think vodka, actually. And then also places like Bell's or Saugatuck Brewing Company, which are Michigan-specific brewing companies that have only gotten so popular that you can get them almost anywhere, but are very steadily producing things that are micro to micro distilled and micro brewed at high, you know, high top shelf quality. This bottle, however, or I suppose this bottle, <laughs> actually didn't come from one of those places. There's a chain of restaurants on the west side of Michigan that also act as micro breweries and micro distilleries. And this chain is known as Latitude 42. There's at least two of them on the west side of the state. And that's where these came from. They make their own spirits, specifically liquors like whiskey, gin, vodka, etc. And this one is their bourbon whiskey. This bottle was, I, I don't know if it was aged or bottled in 2018. I believe it's a two year minimum age statement. They have batch and barrel information on here as well as somebody's initials for whoever personally bottled this one, which I think is really, really cool. So this bottle is something you cannot get anywhere. And this bottle in particular, not only can you not get it anywhere else, you can never get this one again. So, if I set down my microphone for a moment. <laughs> I, I decanted this because I like this bourbon enough to a point where I think it's worthy of being put into a nice little display. Without having poured it first, I'm gonna take a whiff from this bottle to get more of a full bodied scent. Hmm. The easy cop-out is to say it smells like bourbon, but not in the way that something like an Evan Williams smells. It smells more lightly vanilla -y and oak. There's a strong sense of vanilla and oak and of sort of floral honey, but not a very strong floral. Imagine honey from like a certain kind of flower, a floral honey, but the honey is more prevalent than the flower, you know, vegetal flavor you get there. It really doesn't smell like alcohol either. That's the thing. This is a full, a full proof 44% alcohol. Not quite 100 proof, but above the usual minimum standard of 40 to 35 to 40%, depending on who you ask. Yet it doesn't smell like alcohol. Meanwhile, if I were to grab this bottle of Jack Daniels, for example. Okay, bad example. If I were to grab this bottle of uh, Christian Brothers Brandy, substantially more ethanol-like. <laughs> this is literally the lowest shelf brandy you can buy, by the way. I don't drink this, it's so bad. The point is, it's a craft product and a lot of care and attention went into the way it presents itself, and the smell shows that. Pour ourselves a little glass here. This is essentially my dessert as well, as I just finished a massive bowl of cheese tortellini and I am quite thirsty. So it's got a nice clear golden amber hue to it, which apparently is important, I don't know. It certainly looks like a proper well-made bourbon. In the glass, it opens up a little bit more, and these aren't proper smelling glasses. This is not like a tulip glass, but it is opening up substantially. Uh, so you're getting a little bit more of that ethanol, but not strongly. The ethanol's there, but it is not super, super strong. Really, it's the same vanilla honey oak notes that you get in most bourbons, but a bit muted, actually. The being out of the bottle let it breathe so much that to an extent, 
it isn't as noticeable. It's a bit more subtle. Let's give it a quick taste. I'm smiling because it tastes very good, but I've also discovered that I have a cut on my lip, which is uh, not feeling very good at the moment. <laughs> but yes, tasting this, you get, for the most part, um, a lot of oakiness. Um, them being small batch productions, I would not be surprised if they were using a smaller barrel size than traditional distilleries. I'm actually not aware of how large their process is. I imagine they don't talk very much about the specifics of their process because that's what makes them unique. The way the oak presence of aging that you get in whiskey presenting itself here, it seems as though it is, without a doubt, um, producing a smaller barrel over a similar amount of time to produce a more powerful and potent oaky flavor. Once you start to aerate it a little bit, you get a lot of that vanilla. And then vanilla is followed by those oak tannins. But it's kind of moderated, both of these things, by a present sort of smooth honey flavor. Now, traditionally with a lot of bourbons, um, the flavor profile you're looking for is oak tannins, vanilla, honey, cherry, in some order, one way or another. And it's traditional for most bourbons. This one, you don't get very much of that cherry essence on. You don't get that subtle, raw cherry flavor. It doesn't really show up, but you're trading that for a stronger oak flavor that carries these other two flavors of vanilla and honey with it in a really important and prominent way. It really, it's quite good. It's actually very, very good. <laughs> now, the description I just gave you isn't anything of note. As far as I know, this is just a standard bourbon whiskey made with a corn mash, um, produced in small batches in my hometown. So what makes it the best bourbon I've ever had? It is distinctly bourbon. For example, um, if I were to take this bottle of Evan Williams Bottling Bond, and just give this a quick sniff. Does it smell like bourbon? Yes. Does it taste like bourbon? No. I think that when you really break down the craft essence of making alcohol, especially a lot of the effort that people put to in whiskey, and by the way, that was not me dogging on Evan Williams. I really like this whiskey, but paired against this, the strength is, the strengths of these two things are completely different. <laughs> I think the essence of making a whiskey is the craft you put into it, how much effort you spend on producing a quality product. This is clean tasting, light on the mouth, full of flavor, and while it's missing maybe some of those notes that people look for in a proper whiskey, you still get a delicious product that you can't get anywhere else. It's impeccable, it's interesting. And because it is so, strong in what it knows it is. It doesn't need to be anything else. Actually, you know, now that I've taken a swig of Evan Williams and gone back to this, that sort of cherry essence comes in a little bit more now. You get this kind of cereal, grainy oakiness along with it. You can pick out all these flavors, sip by sip, as you go when you drink it. And every step of the way, it's just good. Everything you pull out of this, whether it's all the notes at once or you break down the way it evolves, it's just good. It's what a bourbon should be. It's not weak in any specific area, but it also doesn't excel. However, when you pair it against generally available products, you get something that no one else could ever possibly produce because it is so all around stagnantly good, it makes the shortcomings of other bourbons look really bad by comparisons in some cases. This Evan Williams 1783 is a small batch and you can taste it. The oak presence in this is extreme. I mean, as far as bourbon goes. That's a shortcoming in my opinion, especially compared to something like this. So in general, as a standalone spirit, what's in this decanter, which was in this bottle, is the best bourbon I've ever had. And that's saying something, because I'm a big whiskey drinker. I very quickly discovered that whiskey is my spirit of choice. I'm partial to gin and brandy, but whiskey is what I reach for most of the time. I find it to just be the most personally satisfying liquor to drink. And being a bartender too, I find it an extremely great base spirit to build cocktails off of. You, which is something to talk about here too, because this bourbon, while it's certainly a delicious sipping bourbon, makes really excellent old fashions. A little bit of Angostura bitters, some simple syrup, you know, diluted a little bit over some stirred ice. You've got a product, a creation, a cocktail, that is noteworthy because the strength of the flavors in this glass, paired with the bold spice of Angostura and a little bit of sweetness, just brings out all these new interesting flavors. And it really, really does work. 
I'm wondering if I should finish this glass and then make an old fashioned or pop this glass off and then make an old fashioned with it. And in fact, I'm gonna go make an old fashioned. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. That is my dessert. <laughs> ah, it's so good. <laughs> it just mixes really well. It's, it's a bold enough spirit that it doesn't need to pretend it's anything else. It's just really strong, really bold, but it's all the boldness you want from the regular flavors you find in a bourbon. <sighs> to give it a sort of arbitrary rating, I suppose. Latitude 42 bourbon whiskey. Gonna have to give that a uh, eight and a half out of 10, I think. This is some of the best bourbon you can buy. The best whiskey, I wouldn't say so. Especially if we're talking about small batches, there's some really great stuff coming out of Scotland and Ireland that are not replicable. Small batch stuff where there are 120 bottles of it in existence and there's no way to get more. As it would happen, I've actually had some of that. The hand, as good as this is, not quite as good as that. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in to the show this weekend. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and if you appreciate the whole idea of doing more actual reviews of drinks, or rather, liquors, give me a like. Subscribe down below and ring that bell so you know whenever I post. I do my best to land episodes uh, on Saturdays at noon, Eastern Standard Time. I didn't make that last weekend, had to move it to Sunday. I have a good reason for that though, and I'll discuss that in next weekend's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. You can follow me on Twitter whenever I post about the episodes I'm making and occasionally retweet some fun stuff from other bartenders or cocktail chemists. Uh, I at Mike Hard Reviews on Twitter. Mike Hard Reviews on Twitter. Mike's Hard Reviews was too long, so Mike Hard Reviews. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this weekend's episode. And thank you again for watching. Until next weekend, stay tipsy.